The crowd cried Hosanna that fateful Palm Sunday. Father, the beginning of Holy Week in which the work of salvation would be accomplished. Father, we thank you that as our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rode humbly into the majestic city of Jerusalem, the city that you promised your presence among your people and among us, that we thank you. We thank you for the solemnity of the occasion and to remind us of the price that was paid for our salvation, for our life, for our freedom, and for the certain promise of heaven and eternal life with you. Father, I thank you that as we begin Holy Week that we are especially mindful of the climactic events that occurred and how they have served us and have given to us your love and loving kindness and forgiveness and reconciled us and that our sins have been paid and that we are righteous in your sight because of Jesus' righteousness. And for that, we give our thanks. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And good morning, good morning, everybody. Welcome, welcome. It's good to see you on a, a rainy Palm Sunday. And, uh, you know, it is, and I'll tell you about this a little bit later, that it is amazing because we have so much glass and we have so much light as to how one Sunday, last Sunday, the sunlight can just absolutely flood our worship service. And yet today, you know, it feels like it's, it's nighttime. It's almost dark outside. And so the, the, the dramatic difference. And that particular aspect of our sanctuary played havoc with our video technology. So, so that's a lot, of, a lot of work and a lot of uh, uh, consultation about finding equipment that can accommodate that kind of drastic difference between one Sunday, which can be, you know, total sunlight, and then like today, which can be very dark and still be able to work. And so uh, I think we have finally solved that. And so we do have wonderful quality video and I'm thankful for that. And uh, uh, so I hope, uh, hope that that will continue for years to come. So with that then, dear friends, let's begin our worship. We'll sing our opening hymn, which is hymn number 443, Hosanna, Loud Hosanna. With heart and 
And dear friends, we'll use divine service setting four this morning that begins on page 203 in the front of the Lutheran service book. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his only son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, please be seated. Thank you. Our first reading from the Holy Scriptures this morning for this Palm Sunday in the beginning of Holy Week comes from Zechariah, chapter 9, beginning with verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem! Behold, your King is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak 
peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our epistle reading comes from Philippians chapter 2. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear friends, because this is Palm Sunday, and my preference, please, please rise, yes. My preference certainly is to read the account of Palm Sunday uh, for this day. I understand the lengthy account of our Lord's crucifixion, and we'll get to that during the week. But for today, let me read from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 12. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead, continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, you see that you are gaining nothing, Look, the world has gone after him. And this is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And dear friends, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Which is on page 207. Let us confess together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, please be seated. Thank you. Dear friends in Christ, this past Wednesday for our final Lenten service, we considered a very, very dramatic, a very important chapter in uh, the Gospel of St. John, a little bit earlier in, this, in chapter 11, of Jesus 
raising his friend Lazarus from the tomb and how that showed forth exactly who he claimed to be, the Son of God, the Savior, the Christ, of which death has no dominion over him. And I mentioned how that dramatic event would have a fallout regarding the political and theological implications for that, that when word of that resuscitation, we call it, because we do know that Lazarus did have to die again. But be that as it may, as the word got back to the Jewish leaders and to the Roman, the Roman leaders, you know what they wanted to do? You know what their answer was? Let me read it to you. This goes into John chapter 12. And at verse 9, when the large crowd of the Jews learned that Jesus was there, they came not only on account of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests, plural, made plans in addition to Jesus to put Lazarus to death as well. Because on account of him, many of the Jews were going away and believing in Jesus. Caiaphas who said, Lazarus was dead once, I'll kill him again. And why? Because of people who were brought to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as the Savior, the Son of God, and that indeed today with Palm Sunday and with these events of Holy Week this week, we do see very much how the atmosphere darkens. It starts to get dark. And so earlier this week, it was very, very wonderful and very comforting for me that the full moon was shining brightly because that's how we determine when Easter Sunday is. It is the first Sunday after the first full moon after the vernal equinox. The vernal equinox was March 19th. We have the full moon now, and so this coming Sunday means that it has to be Easter Sunday. But I make mention of that because that dramatic and, and wonderful light, and it's very bright when the sky is clear, is an ancient and very, very meaningful symbol. Because we know that the moon was full that night that Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, the night that he would be betrayed, the, the Monday, Thursday, following Palm Sunday. And so we're very much in the right time of the year to observe and to commemorate these events to which we do observe and celebrate for Holy Week that leads us through the glorious celebration of our Lord's resurrection next Sunday. These important aspects that we consider Palm Sunday today does serve to remind us that I pray for you that the things that we talk about, the things that we believe, that the scriptures tell us actually did happen. St. John wrote his gospel less than a hundred years, or at least a uh, hundred years, you know, that Jesus lived in 33, so about 70 years later, accounting and writing down the very things that Jesus did and said, and how can John knew, know that? Because he was there. He saw it. He heard it. He witnessed it. He saw Jesus hanging on the cross and dying. He was there Palm Sunday. He saw Jesus riding into the city and everybody putting the palm branches down, which was a symbol of their freedom, of their liberation. Still is today. Very much it's on the coins of Israel. Of the palm branches, because palm trees are very affluent in, in Israel, as a symbol of the Lord Jesus Christ coming into the city to be the liberator which in a very real sense he was, liberated us, freed us from our sin and from God's judgment against us by taking it upon himself. 
and that we know this to be true. We do not have, dear friends, a hollow religion. We do not have a faith that we say we believe simply because we believe. The events that the scriptures record, and especially in the Gospel of St. John, almost half of the entire Gospel of St. John are events that occurred during Holy Week. And this is one of them. The Lord Jesus Christ entering into the city that God had promised his presence among his people and the presence, his presence within the world. Humble, riding on a beast of burden in humility, riding onward as we sang in the hymn, ride on, ride on to die. <clears throat> I try, you know, when I'm in the office early in the morning and I try to catch up on the, um, the headlines, the details of what's going on in the world, and I heard, and probably you did too, about this terrible event that occurred in Moscow, in Russia, of gunmen who came into uh, this concert hall where a concert was occurring and, and just automatic weapons and just mowed down, as I understand, 100 people plus are dead now. And when I read the headlines, and you know, the news is not the way it used to be. For those of you who were around uh, about the same time, you knew that we got the news on 5.30, from 5.30 in the evening with Walter Cronkite. We didn't have this, this 24 hour news cycle that we have now. And I think that, at least for me, that, that may kind of perpetuate, uh, you know, a sense of despair and sadness because what you hear repeatedly our politicians arguing with each other, threatening each other, calling each other names, that you hear world leaders from the United States, Russia, China, North Korea, Taiwan, the Middle East, Israel. Of what is it that we do? What is it that they say? They threaten each other and threaten all of us with them, with war, with potentially nuclear war, and here we are in the year 2024, in the 21st century, and the sinful human nature is exactly as it has always been. It may be that we're just more efficient in killing each other. <laughs> Nothing is new. And maybe, maybe it does frighten you. I, I would say maybe there is a place for a healthy fear if somebody gets so angry with us that they push the button or we push the button or who knows what happens. All of it serves to show that apart from God, apart from your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, this is the way people are. This is the way we behave, that, that people who have no faith, people who have no relationship with the Lord, that they're filled with that anger and animosity and hatred and vitriol and seeking to get revenge, get even, rather than to forgive. That's a uniquely Christian thing. That's something that we preach, certainly, because God has forgiven us and we in turn forgive each other and forgive our neighbors who perhaps have offended us. But that's not the way of the world by any means. We live in a day and age in this, in this constant news cycle that we live in, hearing threats and demands and ultimatums, and that if you do this, we'll do that, and you know, firing rockets and missiles and, and all of that nonsense. And so when somebody asks the question, Will we ever learn? <laughs> Why is it we can't ever get this straightened out? Because it ultimately is a spiritual problem. And just a little bit of a history lesson. To, to, do you know who said that? 
that ultimately the human nature, the human condition is a spiritual problem other than the Lord Jesus Christ. General MacArthur on the deck of the USS Missouri in the, in the Japan Harbor when the Japanese were surrendering and that it's recorded in one of the biographies of one of, uh, one of the delegations of their surrender party asking the question that General MacArthur, speaking in such benevolence, speaking in merciful terms toward their former enemy, suppose it had been the other way around, suppose it had been the Americans surrendering to the Japanese, would they have been as benevolent? Probably not, because again, that's just not human nature. The distinctiveness and the uniqueness which you, dear friends, as Christians have, and that permeates every aspect of your life, is that we show forth mercy and kindness and forgiveness. Totally strange to the world. In fact, we may be accused of what? Being weak by being that way, and yet we know that that is exactly the way that Jesus was coming into the city of Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, riding a donkey in meekness and humility, and riding to accomplish his good and gracious purpose of your salvation, redemption. We do think and believe and live in a very different way. And I'm thankful for that because <laughs> Yeah, we can be so caught up in the, the fear and the worry of the fear mongering and the, and the threats and the ultimatums and all that make up the day and age in which we live. Or we say, as the scriptures say, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the son of David, the Lord Jesus Christ. While we live this life in this world in the midst of all of these threats and ultimatums and, and everything that's wrong, the spiritual, the spiritual nature of the sinful humanity shows forth the fact that as the Jewish leaders were afraid that when Jesus raised Lazarus from the tomb, and that he prayed to the Lord, remember we, we talked about this, how he prayed to the Lord to thank his father for this moment. Because he had no fear that when he would call Lazarus from the tomb, that Lazarus would come forth. That he has the power over death now as he did then, as he has always had. And why? So that those standing around who would see this and hear this would believe. That's what they're worried about. That's what they're afraid. Jewish people, the people of Israel, believing. Because on account of him, that is the Lord Jesus and Lazarus, many of the Jews were going away and believing in Jesus. They were afraid. They thought they had to stop that. We say, thank the Lord. <laughs> May more people be brought to faith to hear the word of Holy Scripture, to hear these accounts that the disciples who wrote the Gospels actually saw and heard with their own eyes and ears. They were there. We can trust and depend on what they say and what they write. St. John would go on to say and write, you know, these things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, which He is. And so as we begin, dear friends, our Holy Week for 2024, and with the world the way it is, with our own society the way it is, that nonetheless the timeless truth prevails, that as the people in Jerusalem that day cried, Hosanna, Lord, save us, that he does and he has and will continue to do so in the future. As he made his way through the city and ultimately later that week, to Calvary to suffer and bleed and die so there our salvation our victory has been accomplished thanks be to God dear friends I, I my, my prayer is always that these are words of encouragement 
and comfort and confidence to know that what we believe and what we know to be true does carry us through this life in the midst of the trials and tribulations, whatever they may be. And we thank God, we pray, we worship, we sing, we celebrate and we rejoice ultimately that in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, there do we find our comfort and peace. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. Lord God and Heavenly Father, Lord, yes, we know that we live in a godless and failing world. We know that a world that we live looks to the cross and sees it as folly. Father, we look to the cross and we see peace. We find victory and hope and reconciliation. Father, we thank you for the faith that you blessed us with, the faith that comes in our baptism, the faith that is strengthened in the blessed sacrament, the faith that looks to the cross and to your Son and our Savior Jesus Christ. And there, there do we have the meaning and the purpose of this life and the hope and the joy of eternal life with you in heaven. And that it is in Jesus' name that we pray and thank you. Lord, we ask for your special blessings to be with Dennis Subert, a former member of this congregation who is in Methodist Hospital, to be with Alex Mitchell recovering from his surgery, with George Beeman and Kevin Hall, Theral Arterburn and Ted Wallace, Karen Schultz, Brad Mueller, Keith Mueller, Joan Newell, Lois Hoadley, Linda Weber, Deb Mangles, Dave Barker, Kent Sin, Dean Wiggins, Lori Harvey, Lori Wallace, Nita Kester, George Queck, Doris Sanborn, Brian Beeman, Jerry and Kathy Smuck, and Devin Jackson. Father, for these and all others who we know in our own lives, our families, our friends, our neighbors, that we, out, we lift them up in prayer, thanking you and knowing that you hear our prayers. And for that, we also give our praise and our worship to you. That in Jesus' name, always we pray, knowing that as you accomplish your good and gracious purpose. So we pray that you would use us to accomplish that purpose through us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And dear friends, the service of the sacrament begins on page 208. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he has now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemn the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. 
We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, for this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them as well and said, Drink from this cup, all of you. For this is the New Testament which is in my blood and is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat, for this is the body of Christ, which is the bread of heaven. And the Lord bless you and keep you in your baptism. The Lord bless you and keep you in your baptism. Amen. Amen. Our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. Dear friends, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat, for this is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is the bread of heaven and is given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ. Our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Dear friends, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat. For this is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our 
Our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Dear friends, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat, for this is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. Dear friends, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat. For this is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which is the bread of heaven. Our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Dear friends, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat, for this is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is the bread of heaven and is given for you. Our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. Dear friends, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat, for this is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you and keep you in your baptism. The Lord bless you and keep you in your baptism. Amen. Amen. Our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Dear friends, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat, for this is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Take and drink the true blood of the Lord shed Our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. Dear friends, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat, for this is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is the bread of heaven.
our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Dear friends, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat, for this is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is the bread of heaven. Our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Dear friends, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat, for this is the body of Christ. The Lord bless you and keep you in your baptism. The Lord bless you and keep you in your baptism. Amen. Take and eat, for this is the body of Christ. Our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. Dear friends, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat, for this is the body of Christ. And the Lord bless you and keep you in your baptism. The Lord bless you and keep you in your baptism. Amen. Take and eat, for this is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen.
God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh. We thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. And dear friends, our closing hymn is hymn number 444. Please, please be seated. Thank you. Be.